Welcome back to LearnPiezo.org. Today we will be speaking about the equivalent circuit in piezoelectric materials and we use this equivalent circuit uh, to describe um, the relationship, the energy flow of piezoelectric materials, different parameters uh, in an easy way. So normally we describe this K squared electromechanical coupling coefficient um, with the following diagram. We had input energy, we had stored energy, and we had converted energy. The input energy is of the same type, same type as the stored energy. For example, we input electrical energy by applying an electric field over the material. Some of that is stored as a capacitor, and some of that is converted to mechanical energy. Other, uh, uh, we can also say that it expands. So an easier way to understand this is having the following relationship. So we have this material. We apply an electric field on it. It has an input energy, electrical, and, uh, and then we get a converted energy, and mechanical. Well, let's go stored energy first, electrical, and uh, plus uh, stored energy, electrical, uh, mechanical. And uh, by doing this, now we can separate the different components uh, which are occurring. So we mentioned, for example, when we apply an electric field over a piezoelectric material, the permittivity which is apparent to the power source is the permittivity under free stress. So actually the input energy, as we mentioned earlier, is the capacitive energy with regards to the free stress condition. And this equation right here just comes comes out from one half Q V squared, which is the basic equation for mechanical electrical energy, which we realized earlier. It equals the stored electrical energy, which is the electrical energy under free strain. Plus A L E squared plus the stored mechanical energy. It's one half S E, but that's on the bottom actually. A L S, that's the um, and, and the strain squared. So all of this gives is is equal to each other, and I described this earlier already. But now the question is, how do we how do we relate that to an electrical circuit? So the electrical equivalent circuit of a piezoelectric material is what I claim looks like this. We have uh, a circuit with two branches and one branch has a capacitor and the other branch also has a capacitor. We denote, denote the lower branch as CD and the top one as CM and therefore uh, you know we also can have an equivalent uh, capacitor CEQ equals CM plus CD and this is based on the fact that capacitors in parallel add together if you want to make an equivalent circuit. Let's go to the next slide. Now we're going to describe what these different parameters mean. So again we have on the top C, uh, M, and C, D. So C, D is related to the stored electrical energy. And C, M is related to the store, uh, converted mechanical energy. So what's the input energy? I'll just describe all the energies now. The input energy, or the apparent uh, uh, energy from the sense of the power source, is one half. Um, I mentioned this already in the last slide, but I'll just repeat it really quickly. And then the stored electrical energy, this about the S E, is equal to something similar with the permittivity under constant strain which is lower because it's clamped and it can't move and it doesn't have a uh, contribution from the piezoelectric D constant then we have the converted energy which is going to be mechanical I wrote E, or I should have wrote M one half ALS and this is the equivalent spring constant so we're just writing the equation in this kind of form this change in displacement squared uh, but if you whittle down the equation and you write the, 
And so this is basically the equivalent strain energy. Uh, if you were to look earlier in my lectures, I would have uh, derived the equivalent strain energy. Uh, but uh, if you join just now, you won't know that. So just trust me, and this is the equivalent electrical energy, which, I mean me mechanical energy, which comes out. So we have these three energies. And as I mentioned, this energy goes there, this energy goes there. This, this energy, the, the converted energy goes to the uh, mechanical, this mechanical goes to the mechanical, this electrical goes to the electrical, and this is kind of a, what we consider, if you consider these materials as one, uh, we get UIE. So now we want to relate um, this energy, these energies together, right? So really, uh, what's this capacitance here? What's the order of these capacitance? This capacitance is equal to so the equivalent capacitance, as I mentioned earlier, is equal to the equivalent capacitance. One, it's equal to C uh, under constant strength, which is basically um, a epsilon under constant stress over the thickness. This is the capacitance. And if you want to now consider these two different capacitors, obviously the easy one would be you, uh, let's do the bottom one, easy one. Draw a little arrow going up there. So C D is equal to A E X over T. This capacitor right here is just, is just the uh, dielectric permittivity under constant strain. So we can see how now that this one is constant, this one is the stored electrical energy, U S E. So this one has to be what? The stored mechanical energy. I'll write down a different color. U converted mechanical. So the U converted mechanical, we know it's going to be what we described earlier, one half AL SEX squared. But we know the strain squared to be, let's go to the next slide. So the stored electric, stored mechanical, or sorry, the converted mechanical energy equals one half A L S E strain squared. We want it to be a capacitor, right? More specifically, this top capacitor. So we want in the form of the capacitor, which is 1 half CV squared. This is the form we want the equation in. So now what to do? We want this, this equation in this form and uh, so we can understand what the equivalent, what CD is. Sorry, now what CM is. This top is CM, top is CD. We can think about the lower one as dielectric. That's why it's D, dielectric, electrical, kind of goes together. It doesn't really stand for that. It stands for dissipation. This is what do we call damped. It's, it stands for damped, but you can kind of think of it as dielectric, so we can just remember it. Uh, this one, uh, this M stands for motional, which has to do with motion or mechanical energy. So we want the CM. So we have to make this equation look like this one. The way we do that is we invoke our original P electric equations. First, we understand that X, the strain equals DE, which we know from earlier discussions. So we can introduce that concept. A L S E D squared E squared and I mentioned here that for this problem we're having the di direction of vibration parallel to the polarization direction so basically uh, this length over here is also the thickness okay this length is equal to the thickness because we're applying the electric field here we get a polar this is a polarization spontaneous and this we're getting an electric field going in the same direction. Uh, therefore, if we multiply by L, it's actually multiplying by the thickness. So, and remember, uh, E equals V over L. 
or t whatever you want to call it so v over l so e times l so we basically we can rewrite this equation now one half a l s e d squared one over l squared v squared and we reduce it even further one half a Ah, this works now. So this equation right here, it's C M. So this is C M actually. This is the equivalent stored energy if the material was a capacitor. We actually store, you know, we actually apply an electrical energy and we get the X we get strain through the piezoelectric electric D constant and this ends up being the equivalent capacitance right here. So let me just write it more specifically and more clear, clear, clearly for you. So in this case, where we're having the material vibrate in the same direction as the polarization, and why I'm mentioning that specifically, it'll become clear in a few lectures, a few a few lessons. But basically, this is the capacitor for the M, and for the uh, D one, the equivalent was the was a A E under constant strain, A uh, over T or over L. We're using L for this. So overall, so this is the const this is the equivalent uh, material property. Hope that makes sense. The next we'll describe actually how you can use. You know how can you use this equivalent circuit? We now we showed how to apply an electric field. Apply E field, and then how how do you get the different energies? U I U. C U uh, S is electrical, ele mechanical, electrical. And how do we relate that with this? And how do we calculate these properties right here? We understand that, and we did this. And we delta V. We apply voltage potential. This is C D. It doesn't matter which one's on top and which one's on the bottom, obviously. But we just would like to be consistent, so we know what we're talking about. So we can we can, we understand how to do it from applied field, but what if we apply a mechanical force? And then how do we understand um, that change? How do we understand how the electric fields develop? Because now uh, and we can do that. It's kind of cool. We're going to do that in the next lesson. Thank you for watching.